Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Mr. Alonzo, and I'm the manager of the Creative Arts for the Boys and Girls Club of Greater St. Louis. Today, I hope this message finds you all well, safe, healthy, at home, practicing social distancing with your families. I know this is a difficult time for all of us, it is for me, but I do know we'll get through this, and I look forward to seeing all of you all very, very soon. Today's lesson, though, is about exploring copyrights and music publishing. This is a very important topic in the industry of music and other creative industries as well. We'll get into that. Today, we're going to cover matters of how to monetize and protect your ideas. And by the end of this lesson, you should be able to understand how to monetize your ideas and how to protect them. We're going to cover subjects like intellectual property, copyrights, trademarks, and patents. So I'd like for you all to have a pen, a piece of paper, or use your computer and follow along as you go through all this because I'm going to give you some good information. So let's get started. Again, how money is made in the music industry is our main question today. And I'd like to start with the top 10 highest paid rappers in 2019. Now I'm going to go slow and see if you can guess who these artists are and how much money they make. So starting first is this gentleman. Does anybody know who he is? This is Childish Gambino earning $51.5 million dollars in 2019. Next up we have these three guys. Anyone guess who they are? Give you a couple seconds. These three guys are the Migos. The Migos made $53 million. 2019. How about this rap? Now, if you are a fan of the West Coast, you may recognize this guy. He did very well for himself and has been doing great ever since he came onto the scene. This entertainer is Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar made $38.5 million in 2019 alone. This man needs some introduction. This is none other than DJ Khaled, earning $59 million in 2019. DJ Khaled definitely did well this year. Another man that needs an introduction. This is none other than Eminem, who made 73 million in 2019. Let's see if we can guess who this entertainer is. Travis Scott. Travis Scott earned 85 million in 2019. Give you a couple minutes to figure out who this is. It's definitely looking a little different these days with the beard. This is Diddy, sometimes called Puff, Puff Daddy. P. Diddy, Sean, Sean Combs, he's got a lot of names. But nevertheless, he's doing very well 
he made 103 million in 2019. One of my favorites at this point in time. He's been very consistent in the industry. This is Drake. Drake made 110 million in 2019. No introduction for this gentleman here. This is the infamous Jay-Z, also known as Jigga. He's got a lot of names too. Jay-Z made 119 million in 2019. And before I get to the number one top earner, who do you all think that is? Let's take a little time to think about that. There are a few major people that are not on the list so far that probably did well. Let's think about it for a second. And remember, these entertainers all made money from something pertaining to ownership of their ideas. And we're going to talk about that. But the number one spot goes to this gentleman who made an enormous amount of money in 2019. That's Mr. Kanye West who earned a whopping $220 million in 2019. All from his creativity, from his intellectual property, from his ideas. So let's move forward and talk about exactly how that works and what Mr. Kanye West did to earn that type of money in 2019. Intellectual property and how it works. That is exactly why and how those rappers we just talked about were able to make that type of money. There was some form of intellectual property that they either had a part of or completely owned that allowed them to have the ability to generate and earn that type of money. So it's very, very important that you gain an understanding of intellectual property. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So at this time, I'd like for you to get some notebook paper. You may want to use your computer, but something you can use to take some notes. Because again, it's very, very important for you to understand these different types of intellectual property and how it works and what it means to you as a creator. We're going to be covering the definition of intellectual property, the main types, and going over a few examples. So let's get started. As it sounds, intellectual property with the two words are very straightforward. Intellectual meaning coming from the mind, from the brain. Property meaning ownership. So in essence, the simple form is to say that intellectual property is the ownership of ideas. It refers to the ownership of an idea or a design by the person who came up with it. It is also known as IP for short, which also stands for intellectual property. Intellectual property is something that you can create and that you own. Intellectual property actually has three main areas that it covers. Now there are more specific areas that we can talk about at a later time in a later session, but for the most part, there are three main areas that are important in intellectual property. So at this time, I'd like for you to take these notes. The first type of intellectual property that we're going to talk about is trademarks. 
trademarks are basically brand names. A trademark is a brand name and or a logo. Trademarks are usually words, designs, or a combination of words and designs. And they can also be colors, sounds, and smells. So as you see in this picture, there are different company names that I'm sure you recognize. These are all brands that we've experienced and see on a regular basis. And what you actually see is the logo and the name, and that is trademarked. It's trademarked typically by the source or the main company or the parent company that owns that company. So in a lot of ways, a trademark is a source identifier. So when you see Google and the letters are shaped like that, in those colors, that represents the parent corporation that owns Google. When you see Burger King, for example, with the letters shaped that way, the colors, the font, all of that represents the parent company that owns Burger King. So we pretty much see trademarks and their functionalities every day. It's a part of our everyday life. The next area is patents. Patents protect inventions. A patent basically protects an invention. It gives the inventor the right to stop others from making or using the invention. A patent gives the inventor the right to get paid as well when that invention is used. Now there are several inventions that are around us every day. Uh, the iPhone, the touchscreen technology on the iPhone, the chip in debit cards and credit cards, every aspect of anything functional from physical to a service has some form of a patent. The swivel chair, for example, is also a patent, where someone invented a way to improve the functionality of the chair so that one doesn't have to scoot out and go left to right. That's an invention, and that invention therefore is protected by a patent. So again, a patent protects inventions. That's the simplest way to remember what a patent does. Third and last but not least, and the reason why, again, the rappers you saw in 2019 made so much money, anyone else that's created to make money, is copyrights. Copyrights are another type of intellectual property. Copyrights protect original, artistic, and literary creations like plays, books, dances, songs, paintings, various things that are of a creative nature. Under these copyrights, the creator is granted a lot of rights. Uh, the rights mainly allow the creator to sell, to publicly display and make copies of their creative works. So this is exactly how when someone writes a song, paints a picture, comes up with choreography, whenever those cre creations are experienced, that's the best way to put it. What happens is, is however it's used, in some way, the user or the one experiencing this creativity has to compensate the copyright owner. Now we'll get more into this in terms of how it works with songs since it's our focus today, uh, music copyrights and music publishing. But again, just know that intellectual property that is governed by US law has a category of copyrights that protects this 
and it gives certain rights to where it creates. And that creator has the right to earn money. So copyrights are very, 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 very important. So to recap these areas, we have trademarks, which protect logos and names, patents, which protects inventions, and copyright, which protect artistic creations and literary creations. Now let's check out some examples, a few more. As I said, these are examples that are in everyday life that we experience. Under trademarks, a very popular company is Nike. This is Nike's logo. It is designed by Carolyn Davidson, who did this in 1971, who sold this for a low, low, low price of $35. It is now owned by the Nike Corporation that earns billions. But nevertheless, this image and this name, this font, the shape of the letters, the angle, all of that is protected under trademark. So you are not allowed to use this Nike logo without the permission of the owners of the trademark or the company. As I said earlier, trademarks are pretty much source identified. So when you see this logo, it identifies the company, Nike. Under patents, another very popular thing we experience, and we probably all have since our childhood, is the popsicle. There is actually a patent on the popsicle. The popsicle was invented by an 11 year old named Frank Epperson in 1924 who accidentally left fruit juice on his porch on a freezing night only to return days later to realize that this juice was frozen and there was a stick in the frozen juice. He was able to take the stick out, the juice was still frozen, and he realized that it was just magical and it became what we know today as the popsicle. Now he did sell the patent and didn't uh, celebrate to the level of where popsicles are today. But just to understand the level of inventions and patents, the popsicle today is estimated to sell about two billion every year. So again, a patent protects that. Now there are other companies that have ice, fruit, and things of that nature, and it's just like what a popsicle actually is, but it's not the popsicle the way the popsicle is made. So again, the patent protects the popsicle. And again, last but not least, another example of copyrights is that of the song Every Breath You Take, which was written by Sting, a member of the police, and he was the bass player and singer and primary songwriter for that group. To date, that song makes nearly $2,000 a day, and that's almost $800,000 a year. The song was written, performed, and copywritten by Sting in 1982. The song had a resurgence of popularity when it was resampled by P. Diddy in his tribute to the notorious B.I.G. and Biggie Smalls. But nevertheless, the fact that Sting owns the copyright and he created it once he wrote the song is what allows him to celebrate in the financial rewards of his creation, his intellectual property. And this is exactly why and how the top rappers of 2019 made that type of money and how money is earned in the music industry. So it is the intellectual property that allows musicians, songwriters, performers, entertainers to earn money for their creativity. Next, I'd like to get to the quiz. Okay, now it's intellectual property quiz time. 
let's see if you all were paying attention and if you remember some of these key terms we just talked about. What you're going to do is you're going to match the IP definition with the key term. Okay, let's go. A grant made by government that confers upon the creator of an invention the sole right to make, use, and sell that invention for a set period of time. Is that a copyright, a patent, or a trademark? Second definition. A distinctive name, symbol, motto, or design that legally identifies a company or its product and services and sometimes prevents others from using identical or similar marks. Is that a copyright, patent, or trademark? And the last definition. The exclusive right to make and dispose of copies of a literary, musical, or artistic work. Is that a copyright, patent, or trademark? I'm going to give you 20 seconds to come up with your answers. All right, so for a copyright, the answer was, the definition was, the exclusive right to make and dispose of copies of a literary, musical, or artistic work. Remember, copyrights are attached to songs, movies, books, dances, things of that nature. For patents, a grant made by government that confers upon the creator of an invention the sole right to make, use, and sell that invention for a set period of time. Remember, patents always protecting the inventor and inventions. And then last but not least, trademarks. A distinctive name, symbol, motto, or design that legally identifies a company or its products and services and sometimes prevents others from using identical or similar marks. Trademarks are always protecting logos, designs, and indicators of companies and services. All right, so how did that feel? Do you feel like you know a little more about intellectual property? Do you feel that you know the difference between a trademark, copyright, and a patent? Great. Well, let's get into copyrights and music publishing. All right. So what are copyrights? Do we know? What do you think they are? Well. Again, copyrights are granted by law to a songwriter, giving them six exclusive rights. Let's discuss those rights. Number one, to make copies. What this basically means is that only the copyright owner can make copies of their song or their creation. A copy could simply mean making another copy on a CD, or a digital copy of an MP3, or even duplication for selling a song or recorded material is all part of that right. To make derivative works. A derivative work basically means that it's an arrangement or a version of, and again, only the copyright owner can do that. A popular thing that goes on today is something called sampling. And that is what a derivative work is, it's a sampling, and only the copyright owner can do that. 
Pass out. Number three, Pass out. to perform publicly. Pass out. To perform publicly, Pass out. that means to broadcast on radio or to broadcast on the internet or even in a live venue. These are the rights that the copyright owner has. Number four, to display publicly. What it means to display publicly means to showcase the art in person. And this particular right is almost exclusive to visual artists. So it doesn't apply to music as much, but it's still one of the copyrights granted by law. Pass out. Pass Number out. five, to distribute the work. Pass out. That is the Pass act out. of selling. Pass out. So when the songs Pass are sold, out. whether it's physical or downloads, they all qualify under this Pass right out. given to the songwriter. Pass out. And also means to the record label as well. Pass out. Pass out. And number six, to digitally Pass perform out. the works. Pass out. This is one of the newer rights that was added Pass out. as of late with the invention of the internet. So what this does is it allows digital transmission as well of those copyrighted materials. Pass out. Pass out. Pass out. Pass out. So who are the individuals? Pass out. Pass out. Who get paid? Pass out. You have the songwriter. Pass out. Pass out. And you have the performing artist. Pass out. Pass out. Pass out. Songwriter holds Pass the copyrights out. to the lyrics, Pass out. melody, and musical Pass composition. Out. Pass out. Pass out. And the performing Pass artist out. holds the rights to the specific Pass sound out. recording, also known Pass as the out. master. Pass out. Pass out. Pass out. Pass out. Pass out. What happens with the copyrights is that the royalties are paid. Pass out to the songwriters and the performing artists. When the song is played in a public setting, it generates something called a performance royalty. So again, when it's on the radio, on the internet, a live show, a concert, in a restaurant, anywhere in public, that song is generating a performance royalty. When the song is downloaded, which means sold, purchased, it is generating what's called the mechanical royalty. Now the mechanical royalties are generally collected by the record labels because that is the actual recording, the specific recording. And record labels act as a third party for the recording artist for that recording. So the recording artist has a record deal, the record label handles their business on their behalf, collects the money for them and pays them the royalty. And when the song is used to go along in a, with the moving image, in a movie, a television show, something of that nature, it generates what's called a sync royalty. Now this is when a song is background of a movie, TV commercial, anything of that nature. And what happens is, is the original creator of the footage or the visual has to do a sync license with that particular songwriter. This is a point where typically the songwriter will be working with the music publisher and the publisher handles the business on behalf of the songwriter. So the songwriter and the recording artist actually have business partners, the record label and the music publisher, and they collect the royalties on their behalf. So again, when songs are on the radio, streamed on the internet, downloaded, used in movies and TV, a lot of money is generated for the songwriter and the performing artist. This is exactly why and how so many of those artists that we talked about earlier were able to make that type of money. They had a lot of activity in 2019 with their songs, their merchandise, and so forth. And that is how Kanye West was able to amass over $200 million in one year. 
So let's do a recap. What is intellectual property? Okay, sounds good. What are trademarks, patents, and copyrights? Okay, sounds good. Copyrights grant rights to music creators to receive royalties. Royalties are payable to songwriters and music publishers. And that is how money is made in the music industry. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our lesson today and I hope that you really feel you've learned something. If you have any questions, I will be available to answer them in the near future. Email them or leave them in comments. I'm going to also make sure that I make available some PDFs and material that you can follow up with. Be on the lookout for a part two for me where I go a little bit further into royalties and how money's made in the other royalties as well. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.